Hi everyone, it's Pamela and welcome to Puffy Books. Today I'm bringing to you the international book tag. Now, I was originally tagged by Sher and this tag was created by another booktuber who his name is JD Archer. So I'll pop links in the description box below to both Sher's video in which she tagged me and Jay's original video as well. Now, I'm not fully 100% on what the rules of this tag actually are because they weren't initially clear to me from Cher's video but I believe it's to list books that were written by authors who were not born in the country that you were born in or currently residing. So for myself, because I was born in England and still reside in England, I won't be using any books written by British authors but I reserve the right to use books that were written by authors in the other countries that do make up the United Kingdom such as Wales, Ireland and Scotland. So let's get started. Unfortunately at the moment a lot of my books are in storage and you probably can't see it on the camera there but I have hurt my hand so for this video I am going to be using overlays because it'll just make it a little bit more comfortable for me while we go through the list. And so I've made notes that I can remember all the titles. So the first book on my list is from Russia and that one would be Autobiography of a Corpse which was written by, I'm going to double check the spelling, Sigmund, I think it's supposed to be pronounced Sigmund Akronovsky. It's quite an unusual spelling because there's lots of Z's and letters in it that aren't usually in like the common English dialect. Uh, this book is a collection of short stories, my favourite of which tells the story of the fingers that belong to a celebrated pianist, now a pianist being a piano player, do not confuse with other similar sounding words. And these fingers go out for a night on the town without their owner, which is quite a fun story, I think. Book number two on my list is from Czech, Slovakia, now known, the area now known as Czech Republic. And that one is Valerie's Week of Wonders, which was written by Vietnam Nebav. My pronunciations are terrible, so I apologise for that. Uh, Valerie's Week of Wonders is a gothic tale about a young girl called Valerie and some of the experiences that she goes through as she enters the next stage of puberty. Um, within it, there are references to vampirism, perverted priests trying to take advantage of her, and lots of other sort of magical fantasy elements that you wouldn't might find within gothic literature. It is quite an old book, as in more than 200 years easily. Uh, I do recommend checking out the English translation though because I think the person who did that one did a really really great job and there is also a film of the story as well which is quite a quick film if you like art house cinema so I quite highly recommend that one too. Uh, the film itself was made in 1917. I do actually own a copy of that one on DVD. Uh, I'm just going to move my list a bit nearer to help me remember them all because there's quite a few of them to go through. So, country number three is Korea, aka known as South Korea or People's Republic of Korea. And that one is. The Hen Who Dreams She Could Fly by Sumi Huang, which is a novella about a hen named Sprout who shares dreams of flying and motherhood. So she escapes the farm where she lives and she goes off and has some adventures of her own. And some of her dreams are fulfilled because she becomes the adoptive mother of a nest of other birds that aren't hens because their parent is killed by a weasel. There are some elements within the story to do with um, like sort of fighting what your place is in society. Is that, that's the message I took away from it. Uh, the illustrations in it, even though it is actually an adult's book, are really, really cute. And I highly recommend checking it out because I think if, you, if you're someone who likes things like Animal Farm, then you, you are going to enjoy this one. Country number four is Japan, and for that one I have chosen Snakes and Earrings by Hitomi Kanarera, 
which is this one is a contemporary novel which deals with themes surrounding body modification love obsession and the down spiral that can bring with obsession and alcoholism country number five is taiwan and for that one i've selected the man with the compound eyes by Wu Mi Ying, which is a novel about an unlikely couple who brought together after a tsunami because she's a woman who's she's very desperate with her within her own life and she's actually on the verge of suicide and the man in question because it is a, a hetero couple is from a mythical land and so technically it doesn't exist in terms of standard mortal realms okay and then for number six which is probably one of my fa all time favourite books uh, it's from Germany and that would be The Never Ending Story by Michael End now I'm assuming most of you watching this are very familiar with the fact that Never Ending Story is a children's story and it tells as well as obviously being a very very popular children's film from the 1980s it tells the story of a young boy named Bastian who seeks solace in one of the rooms of his school with a book that has sparked his interest from a local bookstore he entered the actual bookstore because he was trying to hide from some bullies that had been giving him a really really hard time for several months um, it's revealed quite early on in the story that Bastian's mother has died and this probably plays a part into how he's sort of in a weakened state so that the bullies can attack him quite easily but he gains the interest in a book called the never in story he's he steals it but actually with the intention of returning it and i think he actually does return it in the end if i remember correctly and he then hides away in the room at his school because he doesn't want to face his classmates and spends the next few days hidden away reading the book as a result of reading the story he then goes on some fantastical adventures because he's basically traveling alongside the characters within the story the book itself actually contains the majority of the plot from the first film and the second film as well which not a lot of people realize and a few other elements that didn't make it into either of the films uh, I my highly recommended the chapter about the tree that can evolve because this one is quite interesting in the fact that the tree kind of tears itself apart so there really is nothing but then still continues to evolve into other fantastical beings and creatures so it is actually quite i'd say for john's book it's actually quite a difficult reading places because it actually does challenge you as a reader you know and i think it is really really well worth checking out especially if you were a fan of the of the film um also to know in the original book and translations fantasia is not actually called fantasia it's actually called fantastica but when the film was being made it was decided that Fantasia sounded a little bit better and that's what they went with in the end. Number seven is Scotland and that would be Peter Pan and Wendy by Jane Barry. Now a lot of people believe that Jane Barry himself is actually a Londoner. He did spend most of his life in London and the surrounding areas but he was actually originally from Scotland so that's why he's the entry for that country. Uh, I think for using him for Scotland it would have been quite easy to go with someone like JK Rowling because she's considered Scottish but she was actually born in England so for that reason she's not included in this list because of why she'd probably be one of the most famous ones authors from that area uh, I'm quite sure everyone knows vaguely what Peter Pan is about so I probably don't need to go into too much detail here about that one out of number eight I chose Ireland and I couldn't decide between these two particular authors I'm going to discuss with you so I decided to just do both of them because that seems a much better idea and that would be Bram Stoker who of course is the writer of Dracula. Dracula himself is the vampire that launched over a thousand horror films quite easily even the ones where he's not called Dracula because of, because it was not that story was indeed the spawning of a new genre to be honest and so it seemed quite daft not to mention the most famous vampire ever in this list if i'm including books from the united kingdom and the other one i chose was 
Happy Prince and Other Tales by Oscar Wilde. Now, the Happy Prince and Other Tales is actually a collection of children's stories. My favourite two from this story is the, the titular The Happy Prince, which tells the story of a prince who has died and he didn't really know what was going on in his country or how his people were suffering. And after he was died, he died. A statue was erected in his memory and his statue was covered in gold leaf. Uh, it showed him smiling and looking out over the city. He had blue stones in his eyes, you know, they were precious stones. There was like rubies on his hilt. You know, there was a lot of very, very expensive materials put into his statue. And one day there's a bird circling nearby to the statue. I think it's about, I think it was a raven or a crow. I can't remember which. It's been a little while since I read it. And the bird hears the prince crying. And he goes over to find out what's going on. And so the two enter into a conversation where the prince tells the bird about the things that he's seen since he's become a statue that he didn't know what was going on about how all the people are suffering and that the poor are sick and dying and that the children are suffering and begging in the streets and there's a lot of sad things going on that he didn't agree with and so between the two of them it's decided that every day the bird will fly around the rest of the city to the areas that the prince can't see and he will take a piece of gold from the statue to give to the people who are deserving of it Sorry, just needed to sip a my tea there. So, as I was saying, the bird flies out around the city and tells the prince what he can see and takes a piece of gold from the statue to give to the people he believes to be the most deserving of it. And as a result, some of the people in the city begin to get better, their lives improve, and the children are no longer suffering as much because they can sell that gold and then buy the food and medicines that they need. So their lives get a little bit better as a result of it. However, eventually, there ends up being no gold left on the statue and it's just the, the precious stones are now left but there's still more people who are suffering so the prince then has the bird start to take the rest of the stones out to people and eventually he's just a framework with like a, a metallic lead heart inside and his blue eyes and the prince says to the bird that he should go South, fly south for the winter because it's getting colder and you know and, and go go be with your ass of your kind and the bird says no he wants to stay with the prince because he's become his friend and he loves him you know and he, and he supports him so the bird stays with the prince for the rest of the winter and ends up giving up his eyes as well to the people and then after that the bird just carries on telling them the stories of everything you can see and how people's lives are getting better because they've benefited from the things that the prince has given to them even though it now means that he is blind and has nothing left and eventually there's a really bitter cold and the bird dies and then afterwards the the people who originally erected the statue of the happy prince see that it's just a shoddy metal frame now and all tarnished and not very attractive looking the lead heart display and they find the dead bird so they dump what's left of the prince and the dead bird onto scrap heap and then God decides to ask an angel to go down to earth and bring back the two most precious things that he can find so the angel picks up the stone heart or correction lead heart from the happy prince and the dead bird and he takes them up to God and, and tells him about their story and then they get to go to heaven so I suppose it's a happy ending of sorts it's definitely a tale about morality and giving to others if you can do so and the other story that I, I enjoy the most from that collection which is also kind of a bit sad really I think is the nightingale now obviously there's several variations on this tale the one that I've read in the edition I own is about a nightingale who falls in love with a young man who is I think he's supposed to be a poet or a writer now obviously being a bird the, the writer doesn't really pay much attention to her other than times where like 
she'll fan her wings near his face to make him cool down and then he'll feel better if no one is, is ill or is too hot and one day the, the young man meets a girl and decides that he, he quite fancies her and he's trying to find a present to give her and one one evening the the nightingale gets a little bit too close to the rose bushes and a drop of her blood falls on the roses so the colour changes from white to pink and then the young man finds this rose and thinks it's, it's really pretty so he gives this to the girl that he likes but then eventually she starts to want more things from him and so then the nightingale gives more of her blood to make roses of a deeper colour which then makes the man happy so the bird is happy gives the flower to his sweetheart and then she begins to, to want even more bigger gestures and the man decides that he needs a really deep blood red rose to give her because that would be what will oppress her and help him win her heart and so the nightingale one night then decides to sing the best song she's ever sung but while she's doing so she's pressing against the thorns on the rose bush because this is what will get the blood from her heart out which will produce the deeper colour of the flower so the more she sinks the further into the rose she presses and eventually the fawn pierces her heart and it kills her and as a result of this the rose is then the most deep blood red rose anyone has ever seen it is there it's a very very beautiful flower and the young man you know ignoring of the the nightingale takes that rose and gives it to a sweetheart and then a few weeks later this, the girl just still decides that's still not enough and so the nightingale is dead and the young man is heartbroken and I think the, mo the moral behind that one is probably something along the lines of that you should be careful about what you sacrifice because that high price might not actually be worth it in the end but I know other people would probably take away other messages from that one I think it's actually quite sad really but that's probably to be expected from a gothic Victorian um, poet and writer. Mm. Okay, number nine, Canada. That would be The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Now, I don't think there's much I could say right now about Margaret Atwood or th the book The Handmaid's Tale, which is probably easily one of her most favourite famous books and probably one of the most famous books to have come out of Canada in recent decades. Um, so I think the thing I could probably tell you about her is that one time I actually tweeted her on Twitter and she replied to me which I thought was pretty cool and I am hopeful that I might possibly be able to at least say hello to her in person in October later this year because I've got tickets for an event in Manchester where she'll be speaking and I'll be able to get a signed copy of Hagseed which is one of her most recent books so I think that one would be pretty cool. Um, hopefully at the time I'll have something a bit more to say about her and maybe be able to even do a little bit of a video about that event. And then finally for number 10, Australia, I've chosen PVC Blues by Gabrielle Carey and Kathy Lett. Now Gabrielle Carey and Kathy Lett were friends from about age 12 onwards. I know they did eventually fall out in later like later years when they became adults but they were friends at the time the story was written when i think kathy herself was about 15 or 16 when they were working on it now puberty blues is a teenage novel which is about a pair of 13 year old girls called deb and sue who they aim to become the groupies of a local surfer gang and eventually they are successful at doing this but being their groupies mean things like having unsafe sex, taking drugs, not being allowed to eat or go to the, the bathroom whilst in the presence of the actual surfer gang. Um, the book itself is considered to be quite um, controversial, I've got the word then because there are elements relating to underage sex, drug abuse, miscarriages, sexual assault 
and a few other things in it that I think a lot of parents like to pretend don't actually go on, but unfortunately they do. Uh, no, I am aware that there has actually been a TV series made based upon this book in recent years, but I haven't seen any of that one. So if any of you watching this have seen it, you know, comment below and tell me what you thought. I know there was also a film made based on it, which the girls' ages were changed and a few other elements concerning the plotline were perhaps watered down and made it look a bit more palatable for like mature or younger audiences. Okay, and finally, for notable mentions, because there was one other book I did consider adding to the list, but I decided not to because it's actually a non-fiction book, so I didn't think it would quite fit in. And that one would be for the country of Nigeria, and that particular book is We Should All Be Feminists by Chimanda Negozi Adichie. Now, I'm hoping I pronounced that correctly. I, I did look up how to do it, so I'm hoping that I got it right. And if I did get it wrong, I am really, really sorry because it's not fair to not at least try to pronounce something properly if you can do. Now, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit I've not actually read any of the Ditch's fictional novels. Of course, there is her book, on Half of the Yale Sun, which I believe did win either a Bailey's Book Award or was nominated. I know I'm probably making mistakes here and referencing which one it one actually came under. And I think one of her books has also been turned into a film, which of course was great for her. Now, the reason I'm listing We Should All Be Feminists is because it's one of my favourite non-fiction books that I own. Um, I think for me it's because it, I found it to be very inclusionist, which doesn't always happen within feminist books because a lot of them seem to have a target audience that are either more generalised or aimed towards cis able-bodied white women now obviously i am cisgender cisgender if you're not familiar with what that term means it basically means someone who identifies with the gender that they were assigned at birth so i identify as being female you know if you if, you know to explain that one and a lot of them because i am someone who has a disability you know that often is overlooked within feminist texts as well because they're aimed at women who are perfectly able-bodied, not fat, you know, and have other things <laughs> that are slightly more positive about how they might look physically. But, you know, down with that, because it's okay to be different. Now, I think the book itself lives up to the we are part of the title, because the content is framed in a way that's accessible for all regardless of race gender age or sexual orientation and of course there are parts of the text that i think are aimed more for nigerian girls because she's speaking from her own experience as a woman from nigeria so obviously there is that to consider but i found it quite interesting in terms of learning a little bit more about what actually goes on in that country you know so then like my own knowledge is improved through that and if none of you, if any of you watching this have never actually seen her TED talk on the same subject I highly recommend watching it because it's it's quite an interesting talk you know and I think everyone could learn a little bit from it and it is very very accessible for everyone and you can actually find that talk on YouTube as well so I might pop a link for that in below if I can remember to find it after so I do highly recommend that one so that's it from me for today. I hope you have enjoyed my list for the international book tag. I've not yet decided who I am tagging, so I'll pop that in the description box below as well. So take care and bye-bye for now. Bye.